All right, it is story time. Oh, man, we're just talking fishing here. It's winter time, not much going on. A lot of office work going on. So figured I'd share some stories with you guys and uh, getting talking about the fishing of the cold winter and cold weather reminds me of one of my first and favorite wintertime stories that I've got. It's actually a bank fishing story. It goes all the way back to when I was, uh, I guess I was 19 years old and I was in a dormer. Well, I was actually in a fraternity in college and I had had a bass fishing rod that I had in my room since the fall. And in the fall, of course, you're throwing a buzz bait, right? So I got a little black buzz bait tied on my rod. It's the only fishing rod that I have with me all winter long. And all of a sudden spring starts coming around early and it's, it's February. It's right around my birthday, birthday time is why I remember it being in February. So it's still technically in Oklahoma one of the coldest months of the year. And we had this warming trend and it started getting like 60, 70 degrees. And it was like that all week long. And so me and my buddy, we just couldn't take it any longer. We had to go fishing. So the only lure I had was on that rod. I grabbed the rod, we throw it in the little Bronco twos that I drove at that time. And we drive out into the country and we don't know where we're going. So don't tell anybody, and don't tell my kids. But we did that little thing called uh, called pond hopping. We went looking for the biggest farm pond that we could find. And we were, uh, I was at OSU, so we went north of, north of Stillwater, we went up north, about 10, 15 miles, we drove out in the middle of the country, we found this big old, big old pond. Look at this thing right here. Look at this thing. <laughs> Spinning around on me. Spinning around me, sorry about that, guys. Looped around. It is upside down now. Nope, it's good, we're good, we good, we good. <laughs> So anyways, back to back to my story, yeah. So we went out and we found this pond and we climbed over the fence and we were looking around with the old farmers up on the hill and, and uh, we're fishing along, fishing along, fishing along. We have no bites, but we can't really walk around the whole pond uh, just because you guys know how it is around certain parts you can only fish. So I crawl out on this log and I'm standing on this log and I'm throwing this buzz bait, just continually throwing it. Same cast, same cast, same cast, same cast. And I don't know how many times I made that cast. All of a sudden it just went under the water and I reel into it and I realize it's a fish. I, it wasn't like it just exploded on it. It just disappeared underwater. And I pull that thing up the bank when I do, man, I realize it's the biggest fish I've ever caught in my life. And I don't know how big it is. So I grab the thing and I go to run into my buddy, Jay. And I go running like, Jay, 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 I caught a monster. He's about a hundred yards away. And he had just caught a little bitty fish of his own, maybe like a little half pounder or something like that. And we're both kind of like, how big is this? I don't know how much it weighs. And we took his fish and we put it, my fish's mouth was like that, you know, it was a big old fish. And we put the, we put his bass inside my fish's mouth, you know, we played around with it and did all that. And he's like, oh dude, I got one of those, uh, one of those scales. Uh, but it was one of those scales that, you know, has the, has the spring inside and it, you know, it was old and kind of rusted inside of his tackle box. And so we, we put that fish on the scale and it went like almost 11 pounds on the scales. And we were like, oh my gosh, we were cheering and like excited. And then we got all nervous because because we were we knew we weren't supposed to be at that pond. So we put the fish back. Before I put it back, I laid it down next to my rod and I, you know, kind of measured where it was at in the rod. And, and, um, and we put it back and let it go. And, and we went back to the, to the, fraternity where we were roommates we went back there and started bragging to everybody about the, fit, the giant fish i caught and everybody no way you caught a double digit it's the same today you know you catch a double digit today no matter if you're 19 years old or 40 years old no one thinks it's possible they all think you're lying about it so same thing happened back then so then it got me double guessing myself thinking well man maybe his scale wasn't accurate the springs and whatever and so we actually went on line and got on some wildlife department and we were like what is a bass and we got the rod out we measured and i forgot what it was 26 or something inches i can't remember exactly how long it was but i remember something at some point said like you know a bass over 25 inches or something like that is 10 plus pounds now i'm this is going off on memory so don't quote me exactly don't call me out on this go ahead call me out i'm going back off of what you know like 20 something years ago <laughs> memory guys so uh but yeah, it said over 10 pounders. And, and to that, at that point in time, it was my first 10 pounder. And yet it still almost didn't feel real because we didn't get to enjoy it. We didn't get pictures of it. We just had to put it back in the water real quick. Of course we weren't supposed to be there, but, but that's my first double digit in the winter. It was actually a February fish. 
on the bank, throwing a buzzbait in february who would have thought?